Hey everybody, Dave here again, and I unfortunately I don't consider this an exciting video, but it is a very good and informational video for you. Um, this is maybe some a little bit of dry content, which for dry content I try to keep them as short as possible. Uh, this is one of these painful things that you need to know about because more than likely you're using Azure Key Vault services and Power Automate incorrectly. And while security is never an exciting information, it may save your job if you do something that could cost you your job. So I just wanted to make sure that at least that you're aware or that you're in the know. So many people use Azure Key Vault services in a Power Automate flow and they'll do something like, uh, you know, they'll have some trigger that'll kick it off. They will get the secret from Azure and Key Vault and then what they'll do, and instead, I just have a compose here where I'm presenting the value and so that's so that we can try to see the value but essentially what would happen is this might be a connector to SQL Server and the secret which essentially is a password will be used or its value meaning the actual password will be used in the connection say to SQL Server because maybe the value is the password for the SA account on a SQL Server and so in this stupid example, again, it's just to compose object. So I'm going to go through some previous flow runs because I want to show you the default way that I see a lot of people doing it. And this is what could cost you your job. So the problem is not using Key Vault services. So in that regard, you pretty much did everything that you were told to do or expected to do. But I think there may be some uh, assumptions on everybody's behalf that A, this is how you do it, and B, that you know what you're doing when you do this, and something might not be, you know, uh, very accurate. Like, th that could be the farthest from the truth, because all you know is to use the key vault connecting uh, connection, and so that's what you were told. The problem is, here's the problem. Uh, if we look at the outputs for the get secret, so essentially it goes out, goes to the vault, we name the secret, so this is the name of the secret as well as here. But the value is the actual password. So then this begs the question, you know, when we look at the compose, we also see the password being exposed here as well. Now as an employee looking over the logs or looking through these flow runs or the help desk, a disgruntled employee can very easily capture the password. Well, what was the point of the Azure Key Vault services in the first place? It was to keep from typing in plain text, username and passwords or hard coding stuff that was in an insecure way to where people that weren't authorized didn't have access to sensitive information like this password because it's the SA password to the entire SQL Server database putting every single thing at risk. So huge, huge security implications there. When in reality, if and or when configured securely or correctly, it will look like this. The outputs, it says the contents are not shown due to the security configuration, and you'll also get this down here on your inputs and outputs showing the same thing. So the question is, how did I go ahead and do that to make sure that this is configured properly, and how do you do it as well to avoid getting fired? So essentially, what you want to do is you want to go under the Get Secret, and you want to go under the uh, ellipsis over here and go under Settings. Now under here, there is Secure Inputs and Secure Outputs. Now you have to think through this logically and you have to understand how flow works as a program so that the context of the words that I just showed you makes sense. The, and if you are already familiar, that's great. I'm just worried about the, the green newbies or even the intermediary uh, skills people out there that just may not know this either. For whatever reason, each and every one of these nodes is called an action and an action will do something and so it gets information from something either a source or you get it like here 102. In, the, in the compose you see that I actually got the value in other words the compose input was received from the get secret output so the output of this I was able to use and capture this here by way of using this dynamic, right? So when we do this, this is what we're doing. We're capturing the output of a previous action. And in here, we're not capturing the output of a previous action. We're using the action to go get the information That's where because it's doing it on that action. So there's not actually any input. There's just an output. And so this is why for here under settings, I only want to secure the output. 
I don't need to secure the input because there's it's not getting input from anything. It's actually doing the retrieving. Now down here on the bottom, um, let me, there we go. On the ellipsis, again, hit the settings. Um, on this one, I'm securing the inputs. Now there was inputs and outputs provided here. However, if I secure the inputs, then by default, that's going to stay secured for anything that's outputted. And so once I lock this down, from downstream, so if I go and add another compose, and this time I use the output for the previous compose, right? Here's outputs, compose. And if I go ahead and save this and run it, I shouldn't have to go and lock this down and configure it because it's being configured here. Now, even though I didn't secure the outputs here, okay, the input that it received was already secured. So that security should just continue to stay in place and follow through. So let's go ahead and test this theory to make sure that this is in fact the way that it's going to work as expected. Now you could go ahead and force secure it. You might receive an error because sometimes if you try to secure stuff that it doesn't like or expect to be uh, you know, run, then what will happen is it'll, it'll throw an error. But in any event, you want to get away with the minimum amount of configuration possible and it comes from really understanding how does this work. So again, all I did was secure the inputs on the original compose because the secure or get, secu get secret um, was also set up for, for security as well. Now, in theory, under this uh, setting, I've secured the outputs here. I should be able to come back here and turn this off. And I didn't make any setting changes here. So if we save this, and now we run it again, because I've secured the output here, downstream I don't have to secure anything else so all I needed to do is to secure this okay so the reason that I did it this way is so that I can show you about over configuration versus what you should do with just the minimum configuration and as you can see everything downstream is now secured because I've secured the output so the takeaway is and the good news is is that with minimal configuration intelligently thinking through what you're trying to secure the secure once you secure it and its outputs anytime you reference that output from this action it, it is now secured throughout the entire flow okay so you didn't have to go through and secure it and lock it down as much as I did as you originally saw just make sure that you understand inputs and outputs and what to secure and when to secure it and that when you do secure it that it's secured through the rest of the flow hopefully this made a lot of sense hopefully this helps you from making any grave mistakes so that uh, you know you don't catch any flack in the event that something bad were to happen otherwise having passwords exposed typically is a surefire way that if something hits the fan and they're looking for a scapegoat of who to put the blame on uh, that that blame doesn't lie at your feet so diligence is always best done best of luck to you guys keep safe stay secure and until next time have a great day